I'm going to show you my full handbag collection today and yes this is more bags than any one sane person needs but I'm not sane and also I don't need them all. I need to part ways with one or two of them because it is just too many. I used to love making these videos now I sit here and think wow this is a huge undertaking so let's fly through it I'll have to skim through a few. Let's start off with my Louis Vuitton Montaigne because it's right in front of me. This is in the BB size in the Emperor leather. I love this the hardware is gorgeous and for quite a simple styled bag there's a lots of little details on it like having a strap to keep your straps together nobody needs that but I love it because the gold hardware is stunning it is a bit of an impractical style because it's open on the top so I just tend to use the closed compartment in the middle and it comes with a crossbody strap but I've had this for a few years it's wearing really well and I'm definitely not parting ways with that this is a small cocoa handle from Chanel in the chevron in caviar leather and I really wanted something beige and I love how diddy this is and how cute it is and I'm forever saying that I'm going to wear this to events but every time I go to an event where this could be worn I always end up wearing this because I absolutely love this in every possible way so I'm never going to wear this so I think I should part ways with it but I'm not kind of okay with that right now so this will potentially be going on my to sell list. If I just show you the inside of these, they are divided into three compartments. You've got a back compartment, this gapey thing in the middle, and then a front compartment, and it's got a zip as well. It's not the most practical bag, it also has a back pocket. I was so sure I was gonna say I wanted to sell it, but now I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, why would you ever part ways with it? So we'll put it in the maybe pile. This, my mini Lady Dior, is obviously going in the keep pile because I love it. It's completely impractical, but I love the colour. I love how shiny and over the top it is. And it is my perfect wedding bag, evening bag. I use this all the time. This is my business affinity from Chanel. Again, it's in the caviar leather, so it's hard wearing, and I have yet to get any colour transfer on the back, even though I've worn it with M&S jeans. And M&S jeans seem to colour transfer onto some things sometimes, but definitely not this bag. I have to say, of all my bags, this was an impulse purchase. There's quite a few others that were. My impulse purchases are all my favourites. If I buy something on impulse, it's generally because I love it for kind of unspecified reasons. I'm not bothered about if it's practical, I just think it's cute and I know I'm going to wear it. And those are the bags that I do tend to use the most. So again, it's quite impractically small. You can get a phone and a small wallet in there, but I find excuses to wear it because I just want to. This is the Gabrielle backpack from Chanel. It's a bag that again has been discontinued, but I absolutely love it. It's so impractical. I'm never going to wear this on my back. And also the straps, it's just a little drawstring. It's one strap that goes right the way around then through the top and then down the other side so you spend most of your time trying to get them in equal length and then if you wear it on your back it doesn't feel very secure because it is just a pull open at the top but it's got this gorgeous red lining i absolutely love the shape of it i think it's a really cute style i love all the contrasting metals on it and i do actually take it out loads I wear this a lot if I'm very dressed down. So sweatshirt or baggy trousers, I put this on and it looks like a style rather than that I just can't be bothered. So I do actually really love this. Occasionally I think you should sell it. Or sometimes I wish I'd kept the Urban Spirit. It's the only bag that I've ever taken back to a store from Chanel just because that would have been more practical with a child and it was also much more my style. But I think it's nice to have some things that are a little bit different to your typical style because what's the point in having so many bags if they're all the same? not doing very well at selling things right now. Let's go on to the next Lady Dior. So this is my small Lady Dior. It's one of the ABC styles because of the strap that comes with it. It's got a flap in the top. It's beautiful. It's a really nicely made bag. What I like about this for the Lady Dior is because it's matte and it's in this denim, I think it's quite dressed down and yet the charms look so beautiful in contrast. It's just I don't really reach for it very often. I think it's more of a spring than a winter bag, so I'm gonna see if I wear it over this spring, and if I do, I'm gonna keep it, but if not, I'll part ways with it later this year. I did part ways with my larger Lady Dior, the gray one, because I was never reaching for it. Whereas this is a little bit smaller, so I wear it as a crossbody, or I do sometimes, I don't pick it up very often. I pick up my navy blue bags. We'll think about it. It's going in the maybe pile. I can't commit yet to selling anything specifically. That is not by design in this video. It's just because I'm weak. Next up, we have the mini Alexa from Mulberry. I didn't pay for this with my own money. I got a voucher from Farfetch and bought it. And so it was just under a thousand pounds that I paid. And it's such a cute little bag. I don't reach for it very often, I'm gonna be honest. I often end up reaching for other things, but I feel like a good person because I'm using a more affordable bag sometimes. And I love the fact that it's a British brand. I love the hardware. It's just 
I find these so fiddly sometimes that I just can't be bothered because by the time you've unclipped one the other one's reattached itself and it's quite soft and squishy and I do tend to go for more structured bags and I know you should be sold but I kind of want to keep a mulberry as well and it feels so nice and now I'm looking at it I definitely should wear it I've just I've just not looked maybe pile maybe pile for this one now this is another bag that I don't really wear very often it's the trendy from Chanel it's in lambskin and it's so pretty it is so crazy pretty but it's also absolutely covered in dust I wouldn't wear this when I'm taking Henry out which is pretty much every time I go out because I'm so worried it'll get scratched but it's one of my favourite bags because I think it's so pretty. It's exactly how I think Chanel should look. Soft and buttery with a lovely CC. The chain straps on this are beautiful. I love the accordion style. The interior is just really nice. I do like the accordion interiors. Though I do think if it was one big pocket, I might reach for it more. Because you have to take the time to organise your things into this. And often it's, Emma, we're going out. Okay, I'll grab a bag, grab a bag, throw everything in it, put half the stuff in my pockets, go downstairs. So um, this was just too much fuss. But I'm not selling it because I would miss it. Even though I hardly wear it. It's the bag I always look at when I go to my shelves. So you are staying as well. I think we need a bigger bag so I've brought out my favourite this is my large Lady Dior in black with the it's called light gold hardware but it's blatantly silver it's got the flap in the top I wish I really wish I'd got one of the older style of the large Lady Dior I can probably get one fairly cheap on the second hand market but I'm going to talk about that in a future video again why I don't buy second hand because I've had a few realizations over the last year or so but I would love one with a zip across the top with the beautiful little chain um, because I think it's so feminine and gorgeous and I love the canage quilting I think it looks so pretty this is my large briefcase for work I think it looks lovely and you don't see many of these around as well and I definitely love it don't know what it is about the vernie leather from Louis Vuitton but it definitely attracts dust I should sell this this should be going in the sell pile but I had so much fun buying it this is the Amarant PM Alma in vernie leather and that has come off um, it is a beautiful bag and the reason I don't sell this is because I had so much fun buying it I'd gone skiing for the first time with friends just so I could tell people that I'd been skiing and when we went up a mountain I found out that I have a fear of heights which wasn't something that I was aware of and so I literally put my skis parallel and went straight down the mountain shouldn't do that and then decided I wasn't going on that mountain again I just want to go to ski slopes that are kind of flat where I can just drift along and glide and pretend I'm in a film that's what I'm after not hard course skiing and we were in Gestad in Switzerland which is pretty hardcore they haven't got much snow so a lot of the baby slopes were not very good so I just went into Gestad and went shopping and bought this in the beautiful Louis Vuitton there and it was such a nice experience and it just reminds me of that bit in Bridget Jones where she skis into the pharmacy and she's like mid baby I felt a bit like that buying this bag <laughs> I don't know why so um yeah I absolutely love the story of how I got it and it always makes me smile when I look at it it is covered in dust and then the interior I've hardly used this I did used to use it for work at my private clinic because I could fit all my things in the bottom and then a subway sandwich would neatly fit on top just six inch obviously would nicely sit on top of it and it was just a really nice shape and it looks so elegant to pull your subway out of it not that anyone's going to want to buy it now I've said that but despite the fact that it is only lightly used it tends to get like dust inside and I don't know how it's doing that but it's done that from day one of buying it so yeah I think this has been discontinued now which I'm not surprised by I think it is a little bit of an old lady style but I'm there for that it's one of the classic styles from Louis Vuitton I was sold on it because I saw a lady walk through the traffic center once when I was out and she was carrying this and she had a big charm on it and I thought it looked really pretty I do also think it looks borderline like I bought it off a tacky market I've always thought that but I quite like that again it's one of those that's a bit different and I think it's fun to play around with this stuff so I should really so let's go mm, people wouldn't pay for that let's just keep it one of my most used bags in my collection is my Mazarine from Louis Vuitton in the Empron in the black despite the fact that I've sometimes worn this for months and months on the trot without changing into anything else it still looks lovely it still kept its shape really nicely and I absolutely love it this was the bag I was wearing when I went to buy my Birkin and the girl in Hermes in Paris was commenting on this and how much she liked this and how she thought this was more unusual than buying something like a Birkin I was like but I still want the Birkin and um, but yeah I absolutely love this bag use it loads I do wish it had a nicer interior just check there's nothing in here 
not that keen on the interior that it has. See, it's relatively clean for me as well, considering the amount that it's been used. But yeah, I absolutely love this and will keep this forever. Another bag that I'll be keeping forever is my small Chanel flat bag in navy blue. They said it was light gold hardware, but again, definitely silver. I love this, it's so cute. I never really understood why everyone was so obsessed with Chanel flaps, mainly because my first Chanel flap is this and I loved it and I had no other bag for a very long time. I bought this back in 2013 and I thought it was wonderful. I got it big enough that I could use it for everything. I used it in the evening, even though it's a jumbo because it's still Chanel. I used it during the day because it's big enough to put a lot of stuff in, but it never, I don't know what it is. It feels a little bit more plasticky than a lot of my other pieces. And I don't think even on camera, it doesn't look quite as cool. There's something a lot more plush about this, I think. Feel free to disagree. Also, it's navy blue, it's staying with me forever. When you put the hardwares next to each other, you can definitely see that this is golder. But it's kind of just like off silver. So this light gold thing doesn't appeal to me. I think I would sell this, despite the fact that it's my first bag and it was amazing to buy. I went in with my boyfriend at the time and said, can I have a look at a Chanel flap? We went in, I tried it on. He said, that's ludicrous. It was 2975 at the time. I then went back with my best friend who said, you love this stuff and you don't go on holiday. You don't do anything. You've been working for a few years now. Get a bag that you enjoy. So I bought it and I've absolutely loved it ever since. And sadly, I don't know why I feel like I can part ways with it. I do. This one I can part ways with. I'm so proud of me. Clearly that experience did not matter as much to me, but anyway. This is my larger cocoa handle bag in navy blue. Again, navy blue just works for me. If it's a navy blue bag, I will wear it. This is a larger size, which means it's much more practical, especially considering it is an accordion inside. I've just got a bag puff in there. If you haven't seen a bag puff before, they look like this. Again, this was gifted to me. I've got quite a few of them. They're just a nicer way of keeping your bags than having to stuff them all with t-shirts, but you don't need them. You can stuff them all with t-shirts or ties if you want. So yes, I love this, but the straps on the cocoa handle don't crossbody on me. I imagine if you're quite slight or very small, they would, but on me, that's a little bit too short. I look like some form of ham hock if I try and put it over my neck. So I don't really wear it that way. I just dangle it on my shoulder. So I find the strap length a little bit better on my traditional flap, but I still like it. That's still staying. It's navy blue. Another discontinued bag from Dior. This is the Diorama and I got it in the micro canage in the onyx color. I absolutely love this. My first ever Dior purchase and again, navy blue inside. There is a theme to what I like and I'm okay with that. So it's a very simple bag. You can't fit that much into it because it has this curve up at the bottom. So you've actually not got that much space at all inside. I love that the strap is like a slightly more feminine version of the boy bag. And I like that this isn't as recognizable as the boy bag. A few years ago, I went to Germany for Christmas. And as we were coming out of the hotel, I saw a lady who I guess was in her fifties or sixties with one of the leather versions of this. And it hadn't been out for a few years. And I just love a discontinued Dior bag because they're a nice version of vintage wear. A lot of people won't recognize them anymore, but you know what they are, they're lovely quality. And and I just think they're really quite elegant bags. Or because I got the shiny one, it looks a bit like it's off the market again, but I'm okay with that. Another discontinued bag from Dior is the Dior Ever. This is in the beige, and this beige works for me better than the Chanel beige because it's a little bit paler, a bit whiter. So without that yellow undertone, it's a bit better against my skin, I think. So it looks better on me than a yellow beige, which makes me look a little bit jaundiced sometimes. I wanted this for a few years. I owned an art over it. I eventually bought it. And then naturally it was the next year it went into the outlet at 30% off. I still love it though. I use it loads. It is my only beige bag that I actually use. So I've just put this mitzer on here, which I really like. I use this for work because if you put the flap over the top and take the mitzer off, it completely covers up any branding and it's a good size. It's got a crossbody strap, which is a little bit awkward on it, but it's still fine. And again, I'm never going to part ways with this because I love a discontinued Dior bag. I think I might need to whiz through a few because otherwise this video is going to be crazy long. This is my palace clutch from Louis Vuitton. I got a seasonal version that's beautiful on the front and has caterpillars on the back. It has a crossbody strap. It has minimal room inside to actually do anything because when you close it, look at how far those bits of leather go in at the side. So you have a very small gap to keep anything in there, but it's what luxury should be. It's excessive, it's ridiculous, it's impractical, and I absolutely love it. And I can't buy that on the high street, so I'm gonna keep it. Same principles apply for this, which is my Petite Boite Chapeau. It is a little hat box. It's got a wooden frame inside. 
Again, totally impractical, can't even get my phone in this one. And yet, definitely not selling it because it's so adorable and lovely. And again, everything luxury should be. It's got the tiniest, most delicate little clasp on the top. And then inside you can see it's got the crossbody strap. I just love this bag. It is a toy to take out with me when I go somewhere. That is a real luggage tag on the front. A much more affordable bag from Louis Vuitton, but again, one that's been discontinued, is my palace clutch. I use this for years and I used it a lot. And so it comes with a crossbody strap. It is such a good little bag. I have no idea why they discontinued it because I think it was so, so incredibly cute. The employee bags in the store are often a shorter leather version of these for good reason. You can carry it with this strap. You can take this and unclip it and make it into a wristlet. This is not being quicker, Emma. So this is not going anywhere. This is the Camellia Walk from Chanel. It was my husband's wedding gift to me and it has a long chain strap it's a very long strap in silver but clearly it's my wedding gift it's not going anywhere i think it's beautiful and it is really practical and particularly if you want to layer up with coat after coat and massive scarves the chain strap on this is so long you can do that and you've still got plenty of length in it the bags that i love to hate there's something exciting about them because at least you've got an opinion if you're going to pay a lot of money for something you might as well have strong feelings about it and i definitely have strong mixed feelings about this. This is my Gabrielle Hobo from Chanel. Again, a discontinued style that a lot of people didn't like, particularly because of the shape of the base, but I couldn't work it out for a long time. I tried them on and thought no, and then they brought out the new medium size, which is the size that this is, and I wear this quite a bit actually. So it's got the CC on the zip pull, it's got the strap which you can twist and make into different lengths, so it can be crossbody, long shoulder, and it's also got this so you can wear it on your shoulder as well. I love this with my Moncler coat, that's how I tend to wear it, but it's just a bit of fun, and mine has a bit of scuffing on the base now, so I can just enjoy it and not worry about it. I'm not even sure I could sell this because it is so incredibly battered. The hardware is almost grey. It's definitely quite grey on that side. It is cracked. The canvas at the bottom is allowing the red to peek through. You can see it coming through there. This is my size 30 Speedy Bandoulier, one of my first ever bag purchases. I used to use this when I worked in A&E for a long time because I shoved it in my locker. Nobody had a clue what it was and then one day the security guard said, oh you've got a Louis Vuitton bag as bags started to get more Kind of recognizable and popular and then I thought it's just not safe to bring to work anymore. I didn't but I think years of being crammed into a locker have not made this bag fare the best. I do like it but it just feels a bit grubby to take out because the bag is generally a bit grubby. I'm not even sure there's a way that I can clean it up to make it wearable again so it feels like a waste to bin it. I wouldn't sell it because the condition is poor. Even selling it in poor condition I would feel bad for somebody receiving it so I don't know what to do. Let me know what you think I should do with this bag. <laughs> this is my Pochette Matisse in the monogram from Louis Vuitton. I bought this while I was in Paris trying to get hold of a Birkin. I didn't think I was going to get a Birkin. I'd been there for a few days. I'd been applying for an appointment. I didn't get one. And at the time, this was impossible to get in the UK. So when I went into the main flagship store that I'm not going to name the road that it's on because I butcher it every time, uh, I went in and they offered me every different variety of Pochette Matisse. It is honestly not one of the styles that I would typically go for. As much as I like the S-lock, I'm not really into satchels. It's a little bit too informal for me, but it's so practical. It's so practical that I use it loads. This is the bag I often take on holidays if we're going on a city holiday because I can put it in a suitcase and not be worried about what state it'll come out in. It's big enough to actually put loads of stuff in and stay organized. The crossbody strap is really comfy and it's not too obnoxious. I don't think anyway, so that's not going anywhere. So now I've surrounded myself on the floor with bags and I've got to get all the bigger bags that are over there. So bear with me. This is my Neverfull in the GM or large size. It's in the monogram, obviously, with the Pavoni interior. And this is the style that comes with the interior pouch. I got this hot stamped with my initials, which at the time were my maiden initials there. And it's a gorgeous bag. I love it. I am using it at the moment because it's great for dancing. Mark and I have gone back to ballroom dancing together. And so I can put all my shoes and bits in here. And if Henry's dancing, we can take his stuff. Or if he's going to gymnastics, we can take his stuff. Or if he's going to a sport or a party, you can put a kid's present in here. It's just a really practical bag. I also have the Neverfull in the MM or medium size. I got this after I was married and Mark also particularly likes this one. So it's got the pink interior and inside this was a gifted bag liner. And inside there I've also got another bag puff for a different bag. 
and I have the pouch that comes with the bag. I actually don't use this one as much as my other Neverfull because I'm so nervous of damaging the lining and because I don't often get ready that deliberately. Despite having all these bags, so often it's just grab a bag and go out and I try and grab something that I enjoy Whereas now my lifestyle is quite different. I'm starting to use more stuff. I'm hoping this summer that I use this loads. And if I don't, maybe I'd look to sell it. It is starting to patina now. I don't think I'd get much for it if I resold it because it's got my initials on. And I don't really want to sell it. <laughs> I am failing. I'm failing to say I'm going to sell anything. It's going in the maybe pile for now. Now my other mum bag is this one. This is the large book tote from Dior. I absolutely love this bag. I love the Dior oblique. It was what I loved as a child before I could buy this stuff. I used to look at the oblique pattern and just think I need to own something in that. So this is as much oblique as you can possibly get on one bag. I use it as a bag for life when I'm shopping, again as a mum bag at the weekend, but I wore it a few days ago and Henry had a dance exam and when we went in I felt like I was really making a point that I owned something Dior when I was wearing it so that's why I've swapped into the Neverfull because that feels more subtle. <laughs> I don't know it just felt really like in your face so I do enjoy it but sometimes not as much because it is quite loud and proud so it depends where I'm going and what I'm doing but yeah love this bag I have still got my bag liner in there Henry's mucky shoes go in here it's again great for kids parties and putting presents in but it still looks great it's kept its shape really really well over the years and I think if you've seen one of these and you think oh they always look trashy you've not seen a real one there are so many fakes they're so soft and squidgy and always look awful the fakes of this are ugly the real ones are stunning this is my Givenchy Antigona that Mark bought me for my 30th birthday in Paris and it's so pretty. I tried to get this colour in I think it was New York before and they'd completely sold out and it's just a really lovely combination on this bag. The zips on the Givenchy Antigonas are at the other end and so so nice. They feel lovely. The quality is excellent. I have got a little bit of a nick in the leather on the strap. It is starting to wear a bit across the top here. You can see some of the background colour coming through but I've loved it. I've used it loads and it's my 30th birthday bag. That can't go anywhere. I at least we've put some things in a maybe pile. We'll see what happens. Uh, next up we have my Birkin bag. This is a size 35 Togo Noir Birkin with Palladium hardware. Can you tell that I have said that before? I got this in Paris. I got an appointment. I went in. They allowed me to try it on in a 30 and a 35. If I could get a Birkin now, I love the 35. I wouldn't change this. I wouldn't exchange this for something else, but I would get a 30, I think, with gold hardware next if I were to get another one. And I would probably get one in a maroon colour or no, no. I want Deborah. If anybody watches Wild Unfiltered, she has my perfect Birkin combination. And I joke that I'm going to steal hers and I'm not 100% sure it is a joke because she's got this beautiful blue Birkin with gold hardware and it's everything I've ever wanted in a bag. Um, so yeah, this is my Birkin though in the black Togo and I love it. This looks like I got it for free. <laughs> But this, believe it or not, is my Goyard St. Louis tote. This is probably my most used bag of the moment. Oh my goodness, it feels rubbish, I'm gonna be honest. It actually feels like, why on earth would you pay so much money for it? But I do love the look of it when it's filled and when I'm carrying it. I love the navy blue, again, obviously. I'm starting to get a few marks on the interior because I do use it absolutely loads. I often use this for taking things to the post office or children's parties or all the things that I use my Neverfull for or my Dior tote. This is the other one that I use. This I often use when I don't want a high-end luxury bag that's obvious but this is so common around here everybody knows what these are. So yeah I never ever have used the pouch that goes with it so I really do still think I'm going to cut that off and yeah I'm not going to sell it because I use it a lot and I also think it's borderline cracking at the bottom now. We're down to the last few now, so well done if you've made it this far. I am so sorry that I have failed on the what I'm going to sell front, but I have put a few things in the maybe pile and I'm very proud of that. Uh, next up we have a bag that I really love. It is my, my mind's gone black. It is my Chanel tote in the caviar. I've seen people have got this in the goat skin. I think it looks so much nicer in the goat skin and I'm hoping it holds its shape better because mine has been ruined somewhat by always looking a bit like that. I've used it loads. It's got, again, a bag puff in right now. This is not some stealthy collaboration. It's just that I use the bag puffs. So 
and I love that they've got my name on. Although I do think they do it where you have the name of the bag on each one and I think that would be a really fun game to play with Mark. <laughs> Can he work out which bag is which from the name? I think he probably could from the amount that I've talked about them. But yes, this is my tote. I use this loads for work loads it's just a shame it's worn quite so badly i do love it and i've had loads of use out but if i were going to say i regretted a bag it would probably be this one just because it doesn't feel as high end as a lot of my other pieces it doesn't feel like a luxury bag because it's worn so badly and that's a funny thing to say about chanel and when you've paid over three grand i can't remember exactly how much this one was i think it was three thousand three hundred but i definitely don't feel like it was worth that money in the long run Though I think I'm saying that now because I just feel like it's so worn and I go to other things. But at the time, I remember really loving it. So maybe I'm just a bit long in the tooth with this one. Would I sell it? Probably not because there are occasions when I still like to reach for it. It's okay. This is my Strathbury tote bag, which I absolutely love. As you can see, it's pretty worn out on the corners because I have loved it so much, but it used to be the only bag other than the big totes or the very branded totes I've got where I could put my 15 inch MacBook. I don't use a 15 inch MacBook anymore, so I don't tend to reach for it as often, but it is pretty indestructible. I have run over it twice with a hospital trolley in A&E <laughs> because I used to tuck my bag behind a hospital trolley because I had nowhere safe to keep my stuff so putting it in the staff room when all the lockers were broken was not the best idea because things used to go missing all the time so I had to keep my things on me while I was working and obviously you're running around a lot in A&E so I kept these things in the room that I was allocated and every so often somebody would come in and pinch the bed or the patient on the bed would be sick and we'd roll them through to a room so we'd roll over this bag that's just how it went but I used to hide it around the back of the bed to have somewhere safe to keep my stuff please if you're watching this and you're a thief don't go into a &E and then look for doctor's bags in the rooms they usually do have a locker i feel like i'm ending this video on a bit of a low because this is my prada saffiano Lux tote and it is a little bit worn out it was one of my earliest purchases but i loved it because it has no branding on the back and i used to use this for work a lot and i was completely influenced into buying this by watching loads of luxury handbag youtubers and it was one of those it bags at the time I would say that I haven't bought any more Prada because I'm not massively impressed by the quality. I think the stitching on this isn't particularly good. The hardware is hit and miss and it's just not put together in the same way that the other brands are. So I have been a little bit overall disappointed, but I've also thoroughly loved this style and I'm definitely still keeping it. So that is it for today's video. I am so sorry that I just completely and utterly failed when it came to what I'm going to sell. I have got one, two, three, three <laughs> three bags that i maybe will sell we'll see what happens have i literally just filmed that whole video with black on my face i may have done i'm okay with that yeah always the way <laughs> anyway that is it for today's video those are all my bags now i've looked at them all and got them all out again i don't really want to part ways with any of them <laughs> even those three i only picked out three from that whole video but each to their own <laughs> 